Oh, God, I was getting worried because I was like, it's a podium that is not friendly to chaparras. <laughs> and um, I'm a chaparra. You know, you would never know it on television, but yeah, I'm a chaparra. Okay, so I've got nine minutes. 24, 34, okay, 30, 6.33. <laughs> um, well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, first of all, it's a total honor to be here um, because you all are the ones who are doing the amazing hard work. So thank you, Sarita and, and Deborah, for, for inviting me. Um, we got some powerhouses in the house, so I'm just going to call them out because I think Representative Miranda, actually, I told her, I was like, can you please run for governor of Arizona? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, and you, president of the University of Texas at Brownsville, we know of you in the country. We are watching you. And so it is not any mistake that, that a program at UT Brownsville would win an award. And so the young woman who said she's getting two BAs with a 3.8 and she's, you know did it in three years, I think she needs to prepare to run for governor of, of Texas myself. <laughs> So we got some power in the house is all I'm saying. Now, the sad thing, of course, is you all know, and gracias, Peludo, where are you, for recognizing um, the reality of this strange, strange time that we're living in. I j just have been back not even a week from Beijing um, where I was there for a conference and my son went with me who's applying to colleges, you know, and he was like, so how come I can't get on Facebook here in Beijing, you know, and that was one of the big issues and trying to under explain to him what it is to live in an authoritarian government. And then, and then we live in these strange times where the world's greatest democracy has experienced um, a shutdown of our government. Um, there is no movement. We all feel stuck, you know, gun control, forget it, healthcare, forget it, immigration reform, so we feel rudderless, we feel confused, we feel overwhelmed, and of course we all know that this comes from its core, a resistance, a deep and profound resistance to a very real change in our country that is a numbers change, a demographics change, which you all know one number is the 43% uh, increase in Latino population in the last census. We know this, we understand it, we are living it, and yet Una resistencia tan profunda, and we feel it. And, you know, I, I did tweet, I was like, for what sake, for what sake are we going through this exercise? So, in terms of immigration, it, it is, all I can say is that it is absolutely inexcusable and shows a profound lack of leadership, but you know, it is in fact another government shutdown this time of the American economy. Take away all of the issues of humanitarian reasons and families being separated and I don't know, due process and the constitution and human rights. Take away all of that. It is another government shutdown on the possibilities of our country to, in to encourage what we all see here, the potential of who we are as Latinos. So today I was like, well, you know what, Maria, you always kind of, you know, my kids are like, what a Debbie Downer, although they haven't come up with a Latino way of saying that. <laughs> Debra Downer, de, una Debra Downer, por ahí. Eh, <laughs> una Debra Downer. Eh, you know, so I'm not going to talk about, you know, the statistics that I throw out, which was shocking to me when I went to the city of Syracuse, New York, where there are several universities, and they just kind of said, yeah, we have a 65% Latino dropout rate. What? Wait a second, so when it was 50%, you were like, oh, you know. And when it was 55, you were like, eh. And when it was 60%, eh. What? 65% Latino dropout rate in the city of Syracuse, New York. But no, today I'm not gonna complain, okay? I'm not. Porque estoy tan enojada, and I was at an event yesterday where they were talking about the history of our country and how we have to remain engaged and how in those moments, the moments of profound uh, frustration in our country, how things did present themselves. And I'm thinking, I've been thinking about Cesar Chavez, no sé por qué, because it's not like I do spend a lot of time thinking about Cesar, but you know, I've been thinking about him and, and what he and Dolores faced in those moments, and we are not facing that here. We are not hungry here today. Although we know that not far from where we are, there is fear and there is hunger and much of it is being experienced in our community. But we're not gonna talk about that, okay? We're gonna talk about the extraordinary potential, okay? So we know now, you know, that 
right now, one in every four students entering kindergarten is a Latino. And so where we can control, which is my media that we produce, that the boss is a Latina journalist for Latino USA and our new television series on PBS, we control the story. And so we are telling, we are changing the narrative because all we hear is how terrible things are for our kids and yet we know, studies have shown, that while young Latinos maybe go into kindergarten without the best reading skills, and it's such a downer, what is not reported on, but we're reporting on, the fact that the social skills of those Latino students who come into those classrooms way outpace the social skills of the other kids in those schools. And what are we teaching? What are we bringing into those classrooms? Nuestros hijos que saben de que a la maestra se le enseña respeto. Y en una clase, tú estás ahí para aprender. So our problem is that we don't take that and then go into the classrooms and advocate, but we teach those social skills of, you know what, hay comunidad in our families, compartimos. This is the social, these are the social skills that our children are bringing in, and yet in the mainstream media, who wants to tell that story? So we have to change the narrative. You know, I, I gave a speech um, last Wednesday at Columbia University for their Latino Heritage Month celebration, and I told them, it is my alma mater, I did go to Barnard, but I did say to them that the most amazing speech for a Hispanic Heritage event was theirs, which was, they named it, the students named it. It's called Dejando la Duda Atrás, Acknowledging the Power of Our Voice. And I love the fact that they acknowledge that que nosotros sí vivimos con duda. Vivimos con duda because the message to us as Latinos in the United States of America is of utter confusion and a mixed message, and I call it the U.S. Mambo. Three steps forward, two steps back. We love you, we hate you. You're a, thrill, a, a trillion dollar market, but we're going to deport more of you a, a, than ever before. We're going to celebrate you in, um, you know, in, in pop culture with Sofia Vergara, but we're going to ban your books in Arizona. We are gonna celebrate Latinos who are making it through college, but we are gonna make it illegal for undocumented college students in Georgia to get an education. What is the message to us? Of course we are consumed with duda. Of course. And so, what we have to do is change that narrative. Like the kids at Columbia University who said, dejando la duda atrás. And so what we need to do is recognize that power wherever we see it. And as a journalist, this is my life. So a little story on what we're doing on Latino USA is a segment that came up from a moment when I, well, the amazing thing is that now I'm not only a journalist and I'm running a nonprofit, but I actually am also a, you guys, you know, I'm Mexicana, I can't say no to work. <laughs> so I was, <laughs> I was given a, an, a, an extraordinary possibility to be the Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz visiting scholar at DePaul University. And I took it because I am now with the students at DePaul in my city where I grew up. Born in Mexico City, raised in Chicago. Anyway, so I was at the Latino graduation and there, they were, they called out these four young women who all were Latinas, all más diferente, una puertorriqueña, otra acabada de llegar de Oaxaca, the other one, you know, from the south side of Chicago. He, you know, it was a mix. But they were all graduating, all young Latinas graduating with environmental science degrees. And so I said, hmm, these are STEM graduates and they were fabulous talkers. So we created a segment called the STEM Sisters, where we are gonna follow them throughout a year or two to find out, so what happens when you're a Latina and you graduate with a STEM degree? Are the jobs there? Okay, so listen, so when we did our first STEM um, conversation, which you can go to latinousa.org and listen to, so one of them was like, yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm moving to Kentucky because I have a farm there, and I was like, Okay, hold on, girl, I need to like roll it back. How'd you get a farm into K in Kentucky when you're a Chicana from Chicago? And she was like, oh, my girlfriend, her dad gave us the farm. So these are young Latina lesbians who are farming in their <laughs> Kentucky. They are us. And another young woman, oyeme, esta historia es fabulosa, another young woman who was, you know, her parents didn't know, her dad didn't know that she was doing environmental science, and so one day she comes home from DePaul and she's like, yeah, dad, I have to go do some homework, I've gotta go do some soil collection. Y el papá dijo, pues yo voy contigo. And she was like, what are you talking about? You're a window washer. And he's like, no, what you don't know is that I was an agrarian specialist before I became a window washer in Chicago. And it was their profound meeting of the minds, father and daughter, and she just said, this is where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be an environmental scientist. So we don't even know 
what the possibilities are until we show them we have to make it visible. And the other visible that is becoming more visible is that yes, in fact, there is a new face of the civil rights movement. It is now and it is young dreamers who are taking their lives and putting them on the line for all of us to understand that this is what the civil rights battle looks like in our United States of America today. They are not buying into the mixed message of we love you, we hate you. They are saying we are acting like all of you are acting. You are not, you are not stopped by the walls. You are not stopped by the duda. You are not stopped by our, you know, by our sadness because you all know that Latina teenagers have the highest rate of attempted suicide in our country. Si, estamos llenos de duda. Estamos tristes, estamos confundidos. But tonight, you, and I love your emotion, don't make me cry. No, I'm not gonna cry. <clears throat> Tonight, it is about saying to you, do not stop. Do not stop. This is our moment. It is a historical moment where we are tonight that we would be celebrating excelencia en, en, educa en educación when the government has shut down. We are saying, nosotros no paramos. Nosotros no paramos de soñar, de crear, de crear en lo imposible. So thank you so much to Sarita and to Deborah for doing this, we need this, and we need you, and I love you. Thank you for asking me here tonight, thank you. <laughs>